I'm Mike Bernard, Ring 10 Vice President, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Okay, as they say, Jim Lampley, as he says, let's get ready to rumble. This is the main event. This is what Ring 10 was built on. This is the foundation. We were formed within three months. We had our first fundraiser the first year and two months later. What are we gonna raise funds? Why are they gonna come? We can get a bunch of champions, but why don't we honor somebody? Who's the one guy we have to honor? A lot of guys out there are deserving, but who really is the epitome of somebody who dedicated their life to the sport of boxing? I wanna, with all the champions that are here, I'd like to, they're all special. But there's one that's very special to me. And that's the one standing behind me. And I'd just like to say before, because I'd rather talk about somebody else than about myself. Tyrone Jackson, I just want to tell you, Tyrone, you won the title that night many years ago in Los Angeles at the Forum. And it was against Manuel Medina, who went on to be a hell of a champion. And even though the judges didn't get it right, everybody in that arena knew that you won. You knew that you won. I knew that you won. And you've been winning every day since, as a husband, as a father, and as a man. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. I had a little bit of a fight last night. Not not a not a fight with a person, but with an airplane. I <laughs> at an airport. I I had to cover the Mayweather fight last night in Vegas for Sports Center. And I didn't know I was going to cover that when I made a commitment to Matt when he gave me this honor and asked me if I would accept it. And then this came up with ESPN, and I, it was going to be kind of hard to make it. But I gave my word I would make it. So I got the latest red eye possible after I did the post-fight stuff with ESPN. And it was, it was set up where it was going to get me into JFK through Minneapolis, because there was no other way to go. And it was going to get me in there at 11 o'clock. Well, you know, good plans go awry sometimes. I'm on a plane, 
we get out on the runway in Las Vegas, and, well, yeah, the, the engine on the, the engine on the right side's not working. That's not good. That's, that's bad. And I said, you know, even, even with a commitment to these people, that, that's something I should think about twice. They told people, if you want to get off the plane, you can get off the plane. At first, they were going to fix it. It was a valve. After about an hour of that, they decided we needed a new plane, which I was glad. I, I, was, I was very happy. So we had to come back to the, you know, back to the ramp and um, get off the plane and get on the other plane. And then we are off to Minnesota. And then I find out that I miss my connection, obviously, in Minnesota. So after running around trying to get on different planes, I finally they decide, well, we can't get you into Kennedy, we can get you into LaGuardia. So I finally got here. I want to say that I wouldn't have went through that, to be quite frank, just for an award. I appreciate the hell out of the award, and I appreciate the hell out of all these. But I didn't come here for an award. Because I really don't believe awards define us. I believe the way we care about others defines us. And that's why, unless the wing fell off, I was going to come here. Because this organization cares about people, they care about others, and they showed it today in the way that they cared about Howard Davis. They allowed Golden Glove champion, an Olympian, a, a dignified champion, they allowed him to keep his dignity while they honored him, and to remind him of how he's not forgotten. That's very important. Before I finish, I want to say that one of the things that I really do appreciate when you're good enough to give an award to somebody that I don't really deserve it, but I appreciate that I can share it with my wife Elaine because it, it's a chance to say thank you. And I can share it with my children and I'm very blessed as many years off. They're not here, but my son works with Oakland Raiders. I would appreciate it if we all go home and cheer for the Raiders today. <laughs> and my daughter, she's an attorney, and she, she was out of town, she couldn't be here. But I appreciate you giving me something that I can share with them and say thank you. And lastly, I appreciate that all of you have become the greatest corner in the world for fighters that don't fight anymore, but they still need love and they need care. Thank you. Question, I know you covered the Mayweather Berto fight last night. Uh, what was your take on the fight? Typical Mayweather, you know, did enough to win. Uh, not gonna burn the house down with excitement, but you know, he he's efficient uh, and uh, plays it safe, smart, you know, he controlled everything he needed to control. Could have did more, but I, how many Mayweather fights have you walked away from saying could have did more? That's part of watching a Mayweather fight. That, you know, you get to film with Berto, at least for me, his legs are gone a little bit. And uh, if Floyd wanted to get him out of there and he would have ran some punches, he could have done that. But that's not in the DNA of, of Floyd. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not his makeup. He, uh, he does enough to win and he does it in a safe, 
uh, careful way. Do you feel like he's going to actually retire or is he going to go after the Rocky Marshall? I, I mean, I believe when he's saying it that he's going to retire and, and, he, and he's going to be gone now. That doesn't mean he won't be gone forever. That don't mean he won't come back. I think I, I would, if you put a gun to my head and I, if I was still in Vegas where you're allowed to bet, I would probably see if I could find the window where I could bet that he will come back. Uh, I find it hard to believe that he's going to leave that that number that's a fascinating number, 5-0 on the table, half a century, 50, it sounds good, 50 and all. I, I mean, he's, look, he's been a real good fighter, he's been a good manager, he's been a good promoter, he's been a good matchmaker, you know, he's been all those things. And I think he'll probably survey the landscape, he'll look at everything, and as a businessman, if things get quiet, and uh, he finds a good spot and it feels like maybe the MGM and maybe Showtime is missing him. I wouldn't put it past him to look for a spot to come back. You know, to pick somebody who he thinks can be exploited, like he did with Canelo. Everyone thought Canelo was more than he was. Floyd understood what he wasn't. And Floyd fought him, surprised everybody, and he exploited, you know, some of the things that he did in order to uh, win that fight so handily. How slow Canelo was and, you know, how slow his feet were, especially not his hands so much. But, I mean, again, he, he deserves to do whatever he wants to do. He's earned the right. Um, but, uh, like I said, if you put a gun to my head, I, I say that uh, he's done it before. He has gone away and come back before. I would say there's a good chance that he'd like to come back and break that record and get that 5-0 for his mantle, even though he's got a lot of stuff on that mantle. Um, and he doesn't mind making a few extra dollars. I think Floyd wouldn't be against that. His middle name is Money. All right, now we're here for the events in New York. Uh, this, this is their, their charity dinner here at the Marina Del Rey. So how did you get connected with Rintan and Mafarego? No, I mean, they called me. They called me and asked me if uh, I would accept the award. I appreciate it. I, I only accepted, like I said, my speech. I, I don't believe that awards define us as people. I really don't. Appreciate it, but um, they don't define us. How much we can care about others, that defines us. And that's the only reason I accepted this award. This foundation cares about others, cares about fighters. They're calling me. All right, Teddy, thank you. Today we had the 5th Annual Ring 10 Gala. And basically what it is, it's a fundraiser to help boxers that are in need. We had a lot of former champs. Uh, Teddy Atlas was our headliner from ESPN Sports. He also worked with Mike Tyson. Uh, probably the most heartfelt speech was by Teddy Atlas. He was absolutely awesome, wonderful. But every single person on the dais supports Ring 10. Bone Crusher Smith. Um, Everyone, Tyrell Biggs, everyone that's there believes in Ring 10, what we're doing. I can say as the Vice President that every cent we get, it goes back to help boxers in need. Probably the most famous boxer that's part of Ring 10, not probably, definitely, is Iran Barkley. And Iran Barkley, the five-time world champion, the only man in history to beat Tommy Hearns twice, is that every single meeting, every single event, and he really is our poster child, for Ring 10. Anybody talks about Ring 10, I lead with Iran Barkley because he believes in what he's doing. And he's an example of where your life can go if you have some friends like Ring 10. He's doing pretty well. He's getting married in November, November 7th, mark that down, to Pam, and she's awesome for the champ. But all in all, I thought it was a successful event. We're going to recap everything at our next Spring 10 meeting, which always is at the second Tuesday of each month. And then we're going to see uh, where we go from here as far as what boxers need help, what organizations need help. Thank you.